Jesus saved us by reaching out to us. And He said in Luke chapter 19, verses 9 to 10, Today, salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. Verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And we were once lost, and now we are found. And now it is our turn to reach out to the lost and to let them know about our Christ, about our Savior. Dahil isang soul po ay mahalaga na po sa Panginoon. Sabi po na even if one soul gets saved, the heavens are rejoicing, the angels are rejoicing. So, wag po tayong mag-isip na ay isa lang to, hindi yan lang mahalaga yan sa mata ng Diyos. At hindi na po ako magpapakahaba. And I will be starting off na po with our um, sharing for this morning. And yung aking uh, isha share I will start first with a story. So, uh, meron po akong pinanood na video. This is a long time video na po, parang in the past years na po. Pero pinaalala ng Lord habang ginagawa ko po itong turo na to. So, there is this uh, student, high school student po siya. At yung studyante po na yon ay uh, nagkaroon po siya ng birthday. It was his birthday, he went to school, and he invited all of his friends to attend to his birthday celebra celebration which will be conducted sa kanyang bahay. So invited, in-invite niya yung mga classmates niya, mga friends niya, mga kakilala niya. And uh, naghanda po kasi yung kanyang mama sa kan uh, kanilang bahay ng madaming food. And this kid, when he reached home, he told his mother, unfortunately, uh, hindi daw po makakarating ang mga classmates ko, ang mga friends ko. So sa dami-dami na inihanda yung kanyang uh, nanay, and the mother told to this uh, kid, to her son, Now, why didn't you tell them to come? Kasi nga, I prepared already. Everything is prepared already for your friends. Ang dinala niya, mga tatlo or dalawang kaibigan lang yung pumunta. Then, after some time, parang nalulungkot yung bata kasi sa lahat ng in-invite in niya, konti lang pumunta, two or three, attended to his birthday celebration. At nung papasok siya sa kwarto niya para magbihes, nandun lahat ng kaibigan niya. So they surprised him. So kasabwat po yung nanay na ipaprank, the, the so-called word or term ngayon is prinank po nila yung kabataan na yon. But what if, what if hindi talaga sila umaten? What if walang pumunta sa birthday celebration ng student na ito? Because there is a similar story na kuinento po ni Jesus Christ. And this is a parable. And it's known as the parable, parable of the Great Banquet. So meron pong isang master sa story po, sa kwento po ni Lord Jesus Christ. Meron pong isang master and he had this cer uh, ceremony. So meron pong occasion. And kapag may occasion, kapag, kapag may uh, something grand, we know that there will always be a preparation, may handaan. Mga Pilipino, hindi po nagpapahuli <laughs> sa, pag, uh, sa ganitong klaseng mga paghahanda. And most of the time, when we look at the Filipino culture, ang mga Pilipino, pupunta talaga yan. Magbabaon pa, pag-uwi sa bahay, may, may baon pa sila, right? But in the story, in the story of Jesus Christ, uh, when he was talking about the parable, yung master may ceremony, at lahat ng, syempre, ano yan, grand yan. He invited people to attend but not even one attended to his uh, ceremony. Dahil ang sabi po ng isa, sa kwento po ng parable, uh, ang sabi po ng isang um, in-invite ng master, he told him uh, the reason that he gave or the excuse that he gave, ay meron kasi akong binili na lupa. So I am going to check out my land so I won't be able to attend to your uh, celebration. Another one said naman na, you know, I just bought oxen, I just bought uh, an animal, and today, um, kukunin ko yung uh, mga binili ko. And another one naman said, ay, kinasal kasi ako ngayon, so hindi ako pwedeng umatend. In short, nagbigay ng mga excuses. And uh, dahil nga, nakahanda na lahat, medyo na-stress itong master. 
Sabi yung mga tao, naka-close ko pa, na in-invite ko, hindi umatend. So sayang. And what did he ask uh, this master? He asked his servant, sige, and I will be reading it from uh, Luke chapter, and this is our text for this uh, morning. Luke chapter 14, verse 21. It says here, sabi po ng master uh, sa kanyang servant, go quickly into the streets and alleys all of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Verse 22, after the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. Verse 23, so his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. And the Lord has blessed the reading of his word. And nakita ko po, or nakita po natin dito sa situation na ito, na hindi lang isang beses lumabas ang servant to call people, to call uh, anyone sa street. Pero hindi lamang po dito sinabi sa unang, uh, sa 21, sabi streets and alleys. Pagdating po sa next uh, na utos po ng master na ito, this time country lanes, sa hedges, lahat ng lugar na pwede mong i-reach, tawagin nyo sila. So that my house will be full. And this is also our maybe theme uh, theme for this month, Arise and Build a Gospel-Transformed Society. So we are being encouraged na talagang maranasan po yung transformation na yun, Na hindi lang po tayo matransform, but we will continue to build a transformed nation. At patuloy po tayong mag-reach out sa mga souls. And as you can see in our house right now, is it full? No. There are still empty seats. Tara, labas tayo. <laughs> Lumabas para mag... But not maybe, not, not now, pero alam natin na every time kapag bahay po ng ating Diyos, kailangan puno. Amen? Minsan, mas puno pa ang mga theaters, ang mga... Ang mga... Uh, sabi nga, mga casinos, in a book, in a book that I've read, ang mga businesses, tuloy-tuloy yan, hindi nagsistop. Paano pa kaya ang mga churches nowadays? Tuloy-tuloy pa rin ba? Tayo, we don't have like this, face-to-face -face every day, right? Yung iba, online, praise God, at ginagawa po nila yung mga prayer meetings ng ating mga kapatid. Maybe in your uh, uh, homes, meron po kayong mga DFA or Daily Family or Altar. And that's good. And kung eto, mara makita po natin, not just tayo sa mga Kristiyano in the lives of Christians, but slowly, little by little, in the lives of other uh, unchurched or unbelievers na Unti-unti po silang natatransform. Baka this is your first time attending or listening to a preaching like this. Or maybe it is also, or you're a long-time Christian. Pero dapat hindi nawawala yung fire. Na mag-win pa po tayo ng mga souls. Amen? All for the glory of God. Kaya ang title ko po for this uh, morning service is Reach Out. Sabihin po natin, Reach Out. Just like what the servant did, he reached out to people, even those people whom he didn't know. Sabi po, the crippled, the blind, the lame, lahat ng tao, anyone. Kaya tayo, bilang nandito po tayo sa church or yung mga nanonood online, dapat mag-reach out tayo sa lahat ng mga tao, sa lahat ng may hininga, sa lahat ng human beings present on this earth, we have to reach out to them. So this will be a quick uh, few points po uh, na nabasa ko from the Shepherd Staff by uh, Ralph Mahoney and Dr. T.L. Osborne. So may seven points silang binanggit, pero kinuha ko po yung five points po dito. And the first point is, what's the reason? Why should we reach out to people? Why should we soul win? Why should we uh, disciple and evangelize? First point, because of the return of Christ. Sabihin po natin, return of Christ. In Matthew chapter 24, maybe I will just go through, I'll not be reading the whole uh, uh, text, pero in uh, Matthew, 
Matthew chapter 24 verses 3 to 14 po ito, dito po kuinento na ang gospel ay patuloy pong nagsispread. And meron pong uh, earlier this morning, I heard, this is also one of the things that uh, Ate Celeste mentioned, was about the, the return of Jesus. Na, nasa last day, uh, la, nasa last day of the last days na po tayo. And malapit nang dumating si Lord, and one of the proof na, mada, uh, na malapit na pong darating si Lord is people will spread the gospel. Ang dami pong tao ay nasa streets at nag evangelize At natutuwa po ako kasi right now, a lot of, in our generation, puro tayo social media. Puro tayo nasa Facebook, TikTok, and all that. Madami pong platforms ngayon online. And kahit po doon, mayroon po akong videos na there are bold preachers who are sharing the Word of God. Kahit po dito sa Philippines, mayroon isang grupo na kabataan na they are on the streets sharing the Word of God. Because malapit na pong dumating si Lord. And sabi na kapag ang salita ng Diyos ay nakarating sa lahat ng tao sa mundo, Ayan na, darating na ang ating Panginoong Jesus. Whether you accept Jesus Christ or not, kasi meron pong ganon, na even if after sharing the word of God to that person, at meron po siyang karapatan na i-accept or i-reject. But once that gospel has reached to that person, and to all peoples of the world, kahit sa mga tribes, kahit sa anong ethnic group, or uh, kahit mga tao sa jungle, Nakikita ko po sa isang video din, meron pong mga tao na pumupunta talaga sa forest to reach out to those tribes. And nakaka, ako po ay natatakot. <laughs> Pag pinapanood ko pa lang po sila, medyo natatakot po kasi ako because sabi nila, they eat people. Ganun po, ka delikado. But these missionaries or true, firm, and passionate uh, believers of God ay gumagawa po ng paraan para lahat ng tao, regardless of your status in life, maranig, marinig mo yung salita ng Diyos. Because that is important. Ang Word of God at maririnig po natin na gospel ay importante. And what are the other things? Again, um, ito po ay isa ang gospel, kailangan ma-reach lahat ng tao kahit tinanggap mo or hindi, basta ma narinig mo na, ma darating na si Lord. Other points na binanggit po ni Jesus Christ, because even yung disciples po ni Jesus was, they were curious. Kailan ba uh, mangyayari yung uh, last days? Kailan ba namin malalaman na end times na? Sabi po, there will be Birth pains. This will be the beginning of birth pains. So meron pong mga false prophets claiming to be the Messiah. Meron pong mga, um, what you call this, people na dealing with their own desires. Ayan, sab sabi po ng first service, uh, lust of the flesh, the pride of life, uh, pride of life, lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes. Lahat na po magiging godlessness. Hindi po na nakatoon or naka center na sa Lord. There will there will be famine, there will be earthquakes here and there, there will be wars and rumors of wars. At uh, I believe that we are experiencing birth pains right now. Amen. Kahit hindi po natin nababalitaan na meron pong mga war na nangyayari, especially in the Middle East, even if I'm not mistaken, kahit sa parang Pakistan, mga ganon, dahil po ako ay uh, nakakarating po ng DFA, Department of Foreign Affairs, at meron pong Bible study na pinagkatiwala po sa akin ng ating church pastor na si Pastor Shirley Menjola, and I get to hear these types of news. At uh, nakakatuwa dahil yung mga tao po doon na kahit retired na si sila sa DFA, hindi po sila tumitigil sa pananalangin. They keep on praying, not just the time na nandun ako, pero meron po silang kinakondakt na Bible study, yung mga retirees na or yung mga nandun pa, patuloy po silang nag-utter ng prayer for, uh, for what you call this, um, the Filipinos all over the world. Kasi mahalaga po na lagi po tayong nananalangin. 
Importante. That's why there is this prayer revival every Wednesday na pinapost po ng live sa ating uh, prayer garden, JIL Church Worldwide na Facebook and even on YouTube. Sobrang mahalaga po ang prayer ngayon because in the last days, even Christians, even Christians po will run dry. Even Christians po magiging cold na sila. Magko-compromise na sila. And uh, I was rebuked by God because I tend to complain. Lord, parang palagi na lang. I used to complain na ganun, Lord, may prayer meeting na naman, ganito na naman, aaten na naman, gigising na, magtuturo na naman. If that's happening to you, then let God rebuke all of us. Kasi baka unti-unting nagiging dry na po tayo unknowingly. At mahirap po yun. And I thank God because our leaders, our um, people who are in authorities ating church, nire-remind po tayo ng paulit-ulit. And I thank God that even kahit ako ay nire-remind po niya na maging fervent sa pagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos and not just reading, but especially pagdating sa prayer. Mahalagang mahalaga na patuloy po tayong nananalangin. Because sabi, yung temptations daw will increase in the last days. Mas grabe po yung marana mararanasan natin in the last days. We get to hear this. And if we have that spiritual dryness, I pray that all the more we have to come closer to God. Mas lalo po tayong lumapit sa ating Diyos at magpakumbaba and to earnestly seek Him with all of our hearts. Dahil mahirap po kapag tayo ay naiwan. Maybe, sabi po nila, baka magulat po tayo yung uh, um, even those people who are speaking the word of God, who are preaching, hindi sila makakarating sa heaven. Not everyone who calls to Jesus, Lord, Lord, will be saved. Yung talagang tunay na may personal relationship and who really preserved that relationship until the end, sila lang po ang maliligtas. And I pray na lahat po tayo kasama po doon. Huwag natin hayaan na isnatch po ng kaaway yung meron na po tayong salvation. Amen. And I will read this verse. Matthew, in connection po the, with the, because of the return of Christ, sabi po dito in Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the world in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So tayo po, this prophecy is not, is yet to be fulfilled. Naririnig po natin in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, sa Bible, sa ating mga, mga prophets now, na malapit na, malapit na. And yung mga bata, mga kids, on TikTok, there are posts na kids are, uh, having this vision na konti lang yun na re rapture And it is a reminder for all of us to be alert, be very alert, at be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Mamaya yung iba, naririnigin na yung trumpet, uh, the call of God, tapos yung iba hindi na naririnig, biglang na rapture, tapos ikaw na believer ang Lord, na alam mo, uh, umaaten ka every Sunday, tapos naiwan ka. Oh no. <laughs> Malaking oh no po yun. And I pray that all of us, we will get to see the rapture or we will get to be um, caught up in the clouds. Lagi pong binabanggit na verse ni Brother Eddie. At marana mararanasan po natin yung meeting the Lord in the second coming na hindi po tayo maiiwan. Amen? And what is the other reason kung bakit kailangan natin mag-reach out? Because of the experience we have. In John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter or see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Isa po sa mga lagi ko pong tinatanong dati, ano ba itong mga born again? Is it a religion? Because nakaset na po automatically sa mind ko na ang born again is a religious group. Unfortunately, hindi po siya ganon. Or fortunately, hindi po siya religious group. 
Dahil sabi, dahil ako po ay nakaranas, I believe uh, most of us, we have experienced that born again experience. Again, it is not a religion, but it is a personal relationship or personal encounter with God. And tayo po, dahil uh, ako po, maybe I will also share a testimony of mine na lagi ko pong sineshare. I hope na hindi po kayo nagsasawa. Dahil ako po ay uh, laking Middle East Kuwait. Siyempre, at doon po ako lumaki, so nag-aral po ako sa Indian Central School. So doon po ay may iba't ibang nationalities at iba't ibang religion. So alam niyo na po, uh, all the religions, but they respect, yes, they respect the religion. And when I came to the Philippines and uh, I studied here, there is a school here, JIL Christian School Foundation, ng fourth year high school. And then there, I started listening to the Word of God. There was this youth group, youth gig, at nagkakaroon po ng kantahan, just like what we did earlier. May mga songs, loud music. And we know, dahil before I was, uh, I had a religion, uh, and hindi po ganito yung atmosphere. Iba yung atmosphere. But uh, when I came to this school, dito po sa taas, um, Medyo nagki-question na ako, bakit ganito? Bakit hindi solemn? Why is it so noisy and all that? Uh, why are uh, the students in the school not really practicing what they preach? That's hard. That made it even harder for me to believe in Christians. Mahirap po na tayo bilang Kristiyano hindi natin ginagawa yung mga sinasalita po natin. So, what do, what's my point? Wala pong perfect na Christian. Ang perfect lang ang ating Panginoon. Kahit ako po ay preacher, magkakasala at magkakasala po ako. And because I am an unbeliever that time, I didn't have a personal uh, encounter with Jesus Christ. I used to question the Christians, the born again Christians. But when I was asked again because of the power of prayer, na kapag meron life group, today we have a life group, ang pinagpe-pray lagi po ni Mama is, mawin po yung mga anak niya, madala po dito sa church. So it's been about a year, at nakarating po kami, kahit noong mga bago-bago pa po kami, we are standing in that second row, sa dulo, nakayuko, praise and worship yuko. Ganun po kami. But eventually, because... The Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is alive and active. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. Ako po ay na-transform unti-unti. Dahil po ako ay nakarinig ng salita ng Lord, hindi ko na alam na sineshare ko na pala sa mga kaibigan ko. Sa school, sa college. I was second year college that time when I attended uh, dito po sa uh, BTC Malate. And then my classmates were surprised because they knew that my my uh, language is not good. May mga filthy words or bad words na sinasabi na talagang naririnig po natin. Pero what happened when I started sharing the word of God because I was so filled, I was so excited, I was I I didn't I couldn't understand what it was that time. But I I know now na it was the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. At yun po yung pagkilos ng Holy Spirit ay nasi-share ko po sa ibang tao, sa mga classmates ko. Kaya alam na lahat ng classmates ko na ako po ay Christian. But there are also Christians who are quiet. I'm a Christian, you know, I'm gonna keep this for myself. Kasi Christiano ako. Ayoko kasing mabash ako ng mga tao. Minsan concern po tayo sa sasabihin ng mga ibang tao. Instead of fixing our eyes on Jesus, instead of doing His will, we are much more concerned what other people will think about us. Mahirap po yun. But I thank God na nawala po yung ganun thought dahil sobrang in love na in love po ako sa Lord at na nasishare ko po yung gospel. Ang tanong, that experience that I had before, that born again experience, is it still the same until now? And I'll answer that question, hindi po. Hindi po siya the same. Nawawala po yung drive. Dahil nga, the enemy is very subtle and he can take, slowly snatch that away from you. But, but I thank God 
Dahil lagi niya po akong nire-remind. Uh, hindi po ako nakakamiss ng devotion. Through his words, yes, I get to read his words. I get to be encouraged, especially sa ating theme. Kapag naririnig ko po yung mga tinuturo po ni Pastor Joey Crisostomo, ni Brother Eddie, I get to be reminded. And we get to have this LGN na nagkakamustahan po tayo para alam natin yung situation ng isa't isa. Right? That's why we are here in this place, not just to listen to one another, but to be with our fellow brethren, to talk about our uh, maybe uh, difficulties sa buhay po natin, dahil hindi po maiiwasan yun. And I thank God because He reminded me that that born-again experience can be reborn again. Hindi po titigil sa born again, okay, tapos na. Lord, I pray that you revive I pray that you revive yung, yung desire ko to win souls. And dahil uh, this month, again, Arise and Build a Gospel Transform Nation, niremind po ako ng Lord na, sige, ibahin mo yung technique mo kapag nag-share ka ng Word of God. Sige, eto yung paraan ko. And uh, hopefully magkaroon po ng another time na mag-evangelize dahil another uh, idea na binigay po si Lord para Um, tayo po, they, uh, they say na para mas mag-grow po tayo yung pagmamahal natin sa Panginoon, we have to know the basics. Go back to the basics which is prayer, word of God, evangelism is also included. Kailangan po natin mag-evangelize. And dahil nga, I don't know what's wrong with my Facebook account, dahil every time when I scroll, I see people evangelizing. And it was like... Uh, God was talking to me through those videos. You have to evangelize. You have to evangelize. Naririnig ko po dati na, ay, gift mo yung evangelism. Gift mo yung pag-share ng Word of God. And I do believe that. Dahil sobrang strange kung paano po ako binibigyan ng Lord ng mga ideas. And uh, dahil nga, nandito na po ako, share ko po yung isang instance that I believe most of you have heard already. And uh, there was this message, again, devotion time in my personal Time with the Lord. His message was, Don't let these people go away. You give them something to eat. It was about feeding the 5,000. This is a classic story in the Bible. Wag mo silang paalisin. Bigyan mo sila ng food. But the message of the Lord, hindi siya nag-strike sa akin. Not until pumunta po ako ng office, nung pagkaw po, as in when I just sat down, shug. Later, you're going to share the word of God sa jeep. I was like, okay, what's with this revelation? Sabi ko, sige Lord, kapag naalala ko, kapag nasa pida ako. So when I went, uh, when I was uh, tapos na yung eight hours of working, five o'clock, nag-time out na ako, habang naglalakad ako, pinaalala po sa akin ng Lord. So nasa pila po kami, I'm working in Makati, I was working in Makati before, at uh, meron pong sakaya ng jeep So, nakapila po yung mga tao dahil nga uwi na. So, there are jeep na uh, pumupunta at lagi pong puno dahil nga mahaba po yung pila. So, I was like uh, fourth or third sa line. Umalis yung isang jeep na puno na and then another, another jeep came. At sabi ko, Lord, kapag walang nakaupo sa likod ng driver, doon ako uupo. Sabi, sa conversation ko kay Lord. Then when I uh, entered the jeep, walang nakaupo sa likod ng driver, so I sat there. Then God said, the Holy Spirit said, pay for all of their fare. Lahat ng pamasahe nila, bayaran mo. <laughs> okay. 200 labas, bayad. Kuya, bayad po. Yung mga nakaupo, lahat po kami, I will pay for their fare. Talaga? Talaga po, nagulat yung driver. Sabi ko, opo, then I paid And then, uh, dahil nga ako ay nagbayan, nakaupo ako sa likod ng driver, uh, driver, the people na malapit sa babaan ng jeep, they started uh, reaching their fare to the driver. Tapos sabi ko po ni Kuya, na, ay wag na po kayong magbayad, may nagbayad na po sa inyong pamasahe. Then the people were curious because yung mga inaabot nila, binabalik ulit sa kanila. So, sino po nagbayad? Sino po nagbayad? They were asking And then, sabi po ng, uh, ni, ni Kuya Driver, eto po yung nasa likod ko po yung nagbayad ng inyong fare. Then, I was so nervous. Sabi ko, paano ko isashare yung word of God? How will I tell them? Tapos sabi, si Lord na mismo ang gumawa ng paraan. Because there was this one passenger who said, um, ba't po kayo nagbayad ng aming fare? Is it your birthday? 
Sabi ko, ay, hindi ko po birthday ngayon. And then I started the conversation because God led that person to ask a question. And I asked that uh, guy or that office worker a question na, anong feeling po, kuya, na may nagbayad po ng fare mo? He said, I was grateful, ganyan, sobrang hindi ko naranasan ito in my entire life. And I am really happy that, you know, you, parang somehow, they, you could really, I could really see the joy and the, the surprise sa mukha nila. And then I started sharing, you know what, that is what God or Jesus did for us. Now, instead of us paying for our sins, Jesus was the one who paid the price for us to reach heaven. So I started sharing the word of God. And uh, yun experience ko po na yun, pagbaba, nung uh, bumaba, bumababa na po sila sa jeep, they were, they were really thanking me. At nung bumaba na din, na din po ako, may mga pasahero pa, uh, nagpapasalamat sila. And when I was going, walking, to my home, I wanted to really cry. Sabi ko, don't cry, don't cry, baka mag magmukha kang weird. So, dahil sobrang nabless ako sa Lord, dahil through that word, through that personal devotion, na biglang may revelation na powerful, it's not every day you get to have that type of experience. Pero napakasarap, I tell you, na sobrang sarap po ng feeling, na nakapag, nakakapag-share po kayo ng Word of God, and not just sharing the Word of God, but you know that there is an urge na nakinig ka sa Holy Spirit. And that experience, sabi ko, Lord, pwedeng mangyari ba ulit yung mga ganyan? But this time, God is telling I gave you the word, now it's your time. Now, dapat hindi ka pumipili. Anywhere, everywhere you are, be, you are going, kailangan mo mag-share ng word of God. Kahit saan ka pumunta, kahit sa katabi mo, kahit five minutes, kahit magbigay ka ng track, make the most of every opportunity to share the word of God. Because you don't know na kailangan, na kailangan, na kailangan yung word. Kailangan... Nila, obviously, all of us, without Christ, we are nothing. Kung tayo po na mga Kristiyano nang hihina, paano, kung, paano yung iba na walang Diyos sa buhay nila? What more? Can we imagine how intense their suffering or they, their pain might be na wala si Lord sa kanyang buhay? At tayo po, gagamitin po ng Diyos. Because we have already experienced that born-again experience and let us allow God to revive our experience, to fan the flame in us once again. Amen? And next po, sabi ko po dito, another reason is because of our accountability to God. So, kung hindi po ako nag-share ng Word of God sa Jeep, magiging accountable po ako sa Panginoon. Sasabihin, kaya, to tell you honestly, when I read that verse, don't let those people go away again. Yun yung dating dahil ilang beses na po sa jeep siya sabi na, oh, mag-share ka ng word of God. Lord, ayoko, 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 ayoko. But that time when God revealed to me, don't let them go away again. Again, okay. <laughs> Sige, Lord. So I started to share. Dahil magiging sa, sa atin po sisingil uh, yung buhay nila. God, we are, we will, God will ask us, God will question us, what did you do with your life? What did you do when I asked you to share the word? You wasted that opportunity. Sayang po. So let us really do our very best. And there is one of the apostles, nakalagay po dito sa aking notes, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ, si Paul po, siya po ay talagang nag-share na nag-share na ng word of God. He really was very bold, very courageous, very... Um, that zeal he had, hindi po siya tumigil sa pag-share ng word of God. Sa pag-spread ng gospel or pag-preach ng gospel of uh, Jesus Christ, of the kingdom of uh, our Lord. And sabi po doon, I was, uh, when I was reading, when I was studying, hindi po, si Paul po, he wasn't present when Christ ascended. Noong namatay po si Jesus Christ sa cross of Calvary, Paul was not there. When uh, he was buried, Paul wasn't there. When, he, when Christ was risen and when he ascended to the Father, wala po si Paul nung time na yon. And si Paul was one of those people who persecuted the Christians. Na kapag uh, yung mga na, naririnig niya, yung mga tao na nag-preach ng Word of God, ang task, uh, ang mission po ni Paul was to go to those people and to arrest them, to imprison them. 
Pero anong ginawa ni Lord Jesus Christ? Ano po ang ginawa ng Panginoon? Nagpakita po siya kay Paul, and then there's this flash na nanggaling sa heaven, at bigla po siyang nabulag. And God said to Paul, na bakit mo ako pinapersecute? And grabe po yung paggamit naman ni Lord sa buhay po ni Paul, na before he was perse persecuting uh, the Christian believers, he was against God, And now, or that time, he was so bold in preaching the gospel. At when uh, God, uh, um, nung nagpakita ang Diyos sa buhay po ni Paul, meron pong, what do you call this, he, nabulag po siya. So he wasn't able to see. And uh, he, God instructed uh, Paul to go to Ananias, to that person, at uh, ipagpe-pray po siya and he will receive this, his sight again. So, for days, uh, after a few days, nung nakita niya po si Ananias, nung narinig po ni Ananias na si Paul ang pupunta dati, yung pangalan po niya ay Saul. So, nung narinig po niya na pupunta si Paul sa kanya, medyo kinabahan siya. Because, uh, alam niya na isa to sa mga tao talagang ini-empressin yung mga nag-share ng gospel. So he felt fear, but God revealed to Ananias that I am going to use Paul. So heal him, do as I say. And they followed. And grabe po naman yung, yung uh, zeal po, yung, yung grabing passion ni Paul sa paghahayag uh, ng salita ng Diyos. And I pray that in our generation today, hindi lang po tayo scroll sa Facebook. Hindi lang po tayo... Uh, what you call this, pumupunta sa mall, or just uh, being here in this church. Maybe we are here, pero we are mentally or not uh, present, physically present, but mentally absent. Pero hayaan po natin na ang Lord ang mag-take over sa ating buhay. Gamitin po tayo ng ating Diyos, hindi po, here I am, send her. Here I am, send him. He's good in speaking, or she has a better way of delivering to people. Ay, magaling yan, naging English-English yan. Ayan, naalala ko na naman. Dahil nagkaroon po ako ng fear, because when I was, we were asked to, uh, what you call this, reach out to the people here, malapit po sa ating area. Sabi ko, Lord, ayokong mag-share. Uh, like, I used to, Dati po ay nag-share. Dati po ako ay nag-share sound. Ayan. Sound. Okay. Just in case. Hold on. Ayan. So dati po ako po ay nag-share ng word of God. Uh, na on fire po talaga ako. But hindi po siya again dumaan yung pandemic and all that stuff. And there are times that you really... Ayan, ito na lang gagamitin ko para tuloy-tuloy tayo. Ayan. So there are times that you don't have that desire. Pero we have to start. It's, it will always be the start na mahirap. Pero kapag na-start mo, ayan, tuloy-tuloy mo lang hanggang sa umalab na. Like, how do you lit up a coal? Diba? Unti-unting, diba? It will not be fire agad. Kailangan, you will start hanggang sa umalab. And let it be that the Lord will again. Kailangan kasi may desire po tayo. Kung wala po tayong desire, wala din. Paano tayo gagamitin ng Lord? So let us pray that, Lord, can you give me the desire again? And uh, He really reminded me, dahil nga, Sabi po sa Bible, sabi po ni Jesus Christ, that you will have a hard time reaching out to people if all you do is just stay within your church. Lumabas ka, lumabas ka at ihayag mo ang salita ng Diyos. Jesus wasn't only in the synagogue. He wasn't preaching in the temple uh, he, uh, just to say the word of God. Pero ang ginawa po ng Panginoong Jesus, ay talagang naglakad siya. Umalis siya sa lahat ng lugar, sa lahat ng dinadaanan po niya, pinagpe-pray niya, hinihil niya, because he had compassion for all people. At I pray yung compassion na meron ang ating Diyos, ma-instill ma po sa atin. At hindi po tayo tumigil to bring people to the Lord. And as I mentioned, sa buhay po ni Paul, ginamit po siya, in Acts chapter 26, verse 19, sabi po, uh, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. 
So nung binigay sa kanya ng Lord yung instruction, yung vision, yung mission na yon, hindi po naging disobedience si Paul. Sumunod po siya with all of his heart. Napakahirap po ng ganun that you have your zeal na hindi nawala yung desire mo sa pag-share ng Word of God. Tayo, tinatamad pa, Lord. Pwede bukas mainit, Lord. Ayoko. Meron po akong ganung instance. Sabi ko, Lord, kakagaling ko lang sa ano sa sakit so I don't like to attend that, you know, camp sa Camp Race Valley. Medyo... Nagkaroon po ako ng huli inget. Minsan kasi kailangan din natin iway. Mamaya meron kang uh, condition, uh, maybe physical condition. At depende po talaga sa conviction, sa faith mo. But I pray that the Lord will really give us that faith to not stop uh, reaching not just to the people, but first, uh, pinaalala lang sa akin ng Lord, importante that we reach out to Him first. Maging tama yung relationship natin sa Kanya unang-una. Because if you don't have the right relationship before God, how can you reach people? Dahil ang pinakamahalaga ay yung testimony mo. Paano ka na-transform? Paano ka binago ng Lord? Paano ka uh, finifil ng Lord every now and then? Brother Eddie, how old is he? How old is his ministry? Sobrang tagal, pero back then, that zeal that he had is still the same zeal that he have. Maybe even more ngayon. Every time you get to hear him preach, He has that compassion for the lost souls. Every time he reminds even the believers now we have to all prepare for eternity. Lahat po ginagawa ng ating mga leaders, baka sabihin ni Lord, lahat na ginawa ko na, tinapos ko na yung mission ko. Si Jesus Christ, he did his, he accomplished his mission, mission. And then he allowed his disciples, he discipled many people, 12, uh, 12 apostles, tapos nag-increase, nag-multiply, nag-multiply. Ano pa bang kulang? <laughs> lahat na, lahat na nandito na sa atin. Mahirap po sa other countries, mahirap po mag-share ng Word of God. It is prohibited. Walang ang Bible in other places. Pero tayo, I'm sure, madami po sa atin, hindi nagdadala ng Bible. <laughs> Kasi, nasa phone na. ba? Diba? Nasa phone na. We don't get to open our Bibles. We don't get to read our Bibles to highlight. Yung mga pastors natin, nakikita ko talagang gamit na gamit eh. Yung mga pages, ganun-ganun na. Pero yung akin, tingnan mo, bagong-bago. Kasi, ganun. We don't get to flip our Bible. The pages of our Bible. And medyo, one time, dahil uh, nagkaroon po ng meeting, sabi, lahat po ay tumayo, buksan po natin ang Bible po natin, ang libro. Ayan. Tapos ako, wala akong dalang Bible, leader pa ako. Kasama ko, mga assistant pastors, mga pastors. And uh, sabi ko, Lord, nakakahiya, nakatayo ako, tapos wala. <laughs> wala akong dalang Bible. And uh, niremind po talaga sa, sa akin ng Lord, na kailangan ko po talagang magdala, not just magdala, pero to read also. Dahil baka hindi po na natin alam, saan ba ang uh, Hebrews? Nasa Old Testament ba? Iba pala, wala na. <laughs> di ba? We have to really bring our Bibles. This was an encouragement to me, uh, to me last time, nung nasa leadership meeting po kami, at ako po ay leader, tapos walang Bible. Kaya in-encourage po, even if we have that application on our phones, it's good that we get to open our Bibles and flip pages. Amen? Let us not forget that. And, uh, saan po ako? Ayan. So, ayan. Sa, aside from uh, Acts 26 na binasa po natin, another Verse po is Romans chapter 15, verse 20, NIV. Sabi po dito, It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not was no, not known so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Ganun po si Paul. Hindi niya lang desire na mag-share ng word of God, na mag-share ng gospel, but to those unreached Hindi pa nakakarating na salita ng Diyos, dun po siya pumupunta. Sa lugar na hindi pa kilala si Lord, sa lugar kung hindi kung saan hindi pa uh, natatouch ng gospel, dun niya gustong pumunta. 
At minsan ako po, kapag sinasabi ko kay Lord, Lord, kapag pumunta ako sa ibang bansa, kailangan may uh, Christian church, kailangan may GIL. Kaya kada research ko po, kailangan GIL ganito, GIL ganito, ay may GIL, okay, okay, I'm safe. But what if God tells me, okay, go to this place where there is no GIL church and you're going to establish one? Whoa, Lord, chill. Parang ang hirap. Ang hirap mag-establish ng church. But again, I was encouraged because one of uh, uh, our members sa uh, Department of Foreign Affairs sa Bible study po namin, sabi, ay walang, uh, baka walang Christian church doon sa lugar na pupuntahan mo and baka gamitin ka ng Lord na mag-establish ng church. And this person, he immediately, he, he immediately said, why not? Sure, all for God. Ganun po siya ka-confident. Dahil alam niya that he is doing it not just for the sake of his work in service sa Pilipino, pero he is doing it all for God. To win soul in whatever place he will be assigned to. Ganun po yung motive niya. Sabi ko, grabe Lord, ako eto nagko-complain na Lord, kailangan may GIL, kailangan may ganitong church. Pero what if dadalhin po tayo ni Lord in areas na hindi pa Nakakarating yung gospel. Baka sa barangay po natin, wala pa pong Bible study at kayo yung gagamitin ng Lord. Baka sa tahanan nyo po in your homes, baka gamitin po kayo ng Lord at baka, but I believe with all of my heart that God really wants, God really wants for people to have Bible studies in their homes, in their barangays, in their cities, in all places. This is what uh, God will is. Tayo po ba ay kumikilos? Tayo po ay makakasagot nun. We know whether or not our area has a Bible study. Iba po kasi kapag ganito, na nasa congregation, I am the one who's sharing the Word of God. You don't get to speak with me. Pero kapag sa Bible study, my Word of God, my prayer, my fellowship, my time, there are there's a lot of time para makapag-interact with one another. Amen? So, kailangan mas uh, magkaroon po ng Bible study para maging intimate, intimate yung relationship nyo uh, with the Lord and even you get to know each other's uh, situation in life. So, let us continue to share the gospel because again, we will be accountable to God maybe in our family, mem in our family maybe sa ating community, sa ating school, sa ating campus, sa ating uh, workplaces. Doon po tayo ay kailangan not to be a silent Christian, but we have to not let them know na ibabrag po natin yung pagkikristyano natin, but uh, we have to genuinely show the love of Christ to them. Amen? And next po is because of the commission of Christ. In Matthew chapter 28, this is also our theme text for this month, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20, sabi po dito, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the, to the very end uh, of the age. And similarly po, dahil ito po ay last command na iniwan po ng ating Panginoong Jesus, to go and make disciples, not just to evangelize them. Okay, I'm going to speak with you. I'm going to share the word of God sa'yo. Bahala ka na sa buhay mo. Hindi po ganun. To go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, teaching them to obey everything. Kailangan, hindi po once. Kailangan, once you evangelize them, allow them, guide them, teach them. Para hindi po sila mawala. Because there will be questions in their minds. Kailangan every now and then umaaten po tayo ng mga gatherings, ng uh, online, maybe online or even uh, ating mga services. Because hindi po madaling unawaan lahat all at once. Kailangan little by little as we study. Maybe there are people who already know more. Maybe there are people who know less and we need to guide them. Amen? Kailangan po na uh, hindi lang po once, but every time, sa ating, aside from personal devotion, napaka-importante na tayo po mismo nagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos para ma-equip po tayo at hindi po tayo ma-deceive ng kaaway. And we have to, sabi, baptize them 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we have to receive that transformation that comes from the Lord, to be baptized, to have that uh, experience, that born again experience. Dahil kung hindi po tayo lumalabas at nag-share ng Word of God, I don't know what will happen to those people who really needs the Word. And uh, naalala ko po si Brother Eddie, uh, he came up with this JIL mission and vision. Ano po yung JIL mission and vision natin? Sabi po doon, to bring all peoples to the kingdom of the living God, regardless of race, status, belief, and religious affiliations, through the saving, healing, delivering, and transforming power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what's the vision? A glorious church evangelizing and discipling Filipinos and all the peoples of the world through teaching, preaching, and living out the full gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our mission. That is our vision. At tayo, it says here, living out the full gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kung hindi po full ang gospel, mahirap pong mag-share. Because if I... Uh, didn't have that knowledge and personal experience about God, baka na-deceive po ako. Because just like uh, full gospel churches, they have their way of reaching out to people. Nasa streets din po sila, nag-evangelize din po sila. Pero may mga false teachings din that you have to be aware of. There are people on the streets also following the acts of the believers, but twisting the word of God. At mahirap po yun. Kapag ikaw ay hindi nagbabasa, kapag ikaw ay walang alam sa salita ng Diyos, kapag ikaw ay hindi firm believer, madideceive ka. And I had that experience because I was walking along, I don't know why, dahil ako po ay madaling, uh, I am not, I get confused with streets. Even here in Taft, there's this Quirino and all those streets, they look alike. So, dapat may isang lugar po akong bababaan, pero I went down at the wrong street. And then, may nag-approach sa akin, dun sa wrong street na yun, and sh started sharing the Word of God. Holding the Bible, have the, they had the survey, and then they started sharing. And uh, kung ano-ano po yung sinasabi nila, na mali. But I allowed them to speak. Sige, I'm going to listen. And then, when uh, they asked me, oh, do you believe like this, like this? Then I said, uh, uh, I have actually my personal, uh, personal encounter with God. And I also know something. And ako naman, ako nag-share sa kanya. <laughs> ako pa nag-share sa kanya ng Word of God. At sabi ko, kine-question din ko po yung, yung uh, person na yun. Because I definitely know that what that person is telling is not true. And they are twisting and tweaking the word of God. And medyo delikado. Dahil accountable po sila sa Panginoon. They are leading people to false teachings. Last days eh. So, I said, then they, uh, when I was uh, explained my personal te testimony, I explained how I became a born again Christian kasi no one can snatch that away from you. Yung personal na pagkakilala mo sa Panginoon, yung paano siya kumilos, na sobrang na-amaze ka sa pagbabago na ginawa niya sa'yo, yun yung shinare ko sa kanya, yun yung my word of God then, and uh, sabi niya na, I, you can attend to our church and my leader will speak to you. Ah, uh, oh, you can attend to my church. You know, we are here in Malate, Manila. Baka gusto mong umaten sa church ko. <laughs> then we, then I said, uh, uh, then she gave me her, her number. At the next ko po, inviting her, <laughs> inviting her to attend. And uh, hindi ko na po nakita. I don't know if they are active now. Pero ganun po. If the, we are asked by Jesus Christ to go and make disciples of all nations, kailangan baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them. Anong sabi po doon? Teaching them to obey. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I will be with you to the end of the age. Sasamahan po tayo ng ating Lord. Kahit ga, 
kaano kahirap na magwin ng mga souls, they will have their personal belief. But as long as you share the word of God, you share the true, full gospel of Christ to them, si Holy Spirit na po ang bahala sa kanila. Amen? They will remember you. They will remember the word. And si Holy Spirit will work in their life. Amen? Next po is last point, because the harvest, that's great. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Sabi po sa binasa ko pong um, libro, The Shepherd's Staff, We reap our harvest in the fields and uh, out where the grains stands ripe and ready to be harvested. We sell the winsoles by staying inside our church building. So in the end, God, po talaga tayong lahat na not to be in the comfort, in our comfort zone. Minsan ganun po ako, na ay, nandito ako sa church ko. So okay lang mag-share ng Word of God. Okay lang na um, mag-preach because I am confident I am in my place. What if you're not in your place? What if nasa ibang lugar ka na ang daming ang church, ang daming religious or traditional way of uh, believing, ang dami pong iba't ibang uh, mga tao at meron po akong nakitang video na there was uh, a setting at meron pong isang Christian na medyo off yung ginawa po niya. Yung mga tao ay uh, nasa isang street uh, dahil may, I think someone passed away. And it's normal to have like, uh, what do you call this? Funeral service. Pero Christian po kasi siya. And then he didn't want the way that everything was set up. So ang ginawa po itong Kristiyano na to, tinakpan niya yung tenga niya. At gumaganon-ganon po siya. So, mahirap po kapag ganyan yung ginagawa po natin, mga Christians, dahil we won't be able to win others. Importante po, yes, importante ang respect, but also importante how you approach people. Maybe... There are times it depends upon the Lord's moving again on the conviction. Baka sasabihin ng ibang tao na ay umaten ka sa church namin. I've, I've experienced this. You have to attend to our church because our church is the only church that will be saved. Okay. At dahil po, uh, ganun po yung approach, hindi na po ako nag-share. Nag hindi na po ako nagsalita. And also, there's uh, sa, sa jeep, uh, naalala ko po, na meron po akong nag-shineran ng Word of God sa loob ng jeep. And then suddenly, gusto ng debate. Gustong makipagsagutan. Pero hindi ko po pinatulan. There will be people who will accept the Word of God again. And there will be people who will not be accepting the Word of God. Dito po sa area, dalawa pong, uh, I think it was long ago pa, na dalawa pong uh, lalaki sa streets, sa, in one of the streets here. At uh, meron pong isang lalaki na talagang tumanggap sa Lord through prayer of acceptance. Meron pong isang lalaki, he didn't bother. He was uh, crossed, uh, crossed yung kanyang arms. Talagang sabi niya, he, 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 yung expression. And ako po, dahil uh, medyo na, na, ano, naka-hurt po ako sa ginawa po ni Kuya. Sabi ko, uh, kay Kuya, I even shared parang longest po yung explanation ko sa kanya. And uh, again, hindi po natin sagot. Hindi na natin sagot yung buhay po ng uh, taong pinag na natin ng sobra-sobra. Amen? There are other uh, souls na gustong maranasan ng ating Panginoon. Sabi po, the harvest is plenty. The harvest is plenty. Kaya mag-reach out po tayo sa lahat ng tao, whether few or uh, f few people. I think uh, in the book of Acts po, na nung nag, uh, bumaba po yung uh, Holy Spirit, lahat po na-baptize. Lahat po na-transform. I think thousands of people were transformed. And even if there will be few people na, kunwari, in an area, we share the word of God, uh, let's say about 100 people, at 50 nag-accept, 50 ay hindi, 
Huwag po tayong malungkot dahil isang soul po ay mahalaga na po sa Panginoon. Sabi po na even if one soul gets saved, the heavens are rejoicing, the angels are rejoicing. So, huwag po tayong uh, mag-isip na ay isa lang to, hindi yan lang mahalaga yan sa mata ng Diyos. Amen? And uh, as I conclude po, again, I'll just uh, go over, why do we need to reach out to people because of the return of Christ, because of the experience we have, because of our accountability to God, because of the commission of Christ, and last, because the harvest is great. Great ang harvest. Kaya wag po tayong tumigil sa pagwi-win ng souls. And I just really pray that God will instill in our hearts and revive that passion for the lost souls. And as I conclude, sabi ko po dito sa aking conclusion, Jesus saved us by reaching out to us. Jesus saved us by reaching out to us. And He said in Luke chapter 19, verses 9 to 10, Today, Salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. Verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Ang Lord po natin, si Lord Jesus Christ, He came to save and to seek the lost. And we were once lost and now we are found. Amen? And now it is our turn to reach out to the lost and to let them know about our Christ, about our Savior. Amen. And as we stand...